Hi, my name is Mike, and today I'm going to be talking about the Microtik CRS328. Now, I purchased this switch about a month ago, and it really has, has been a good purchase and a good addition to the home lab. It's replacing an old Netgear 24 port gigabit switch uh, that I've had for over 10 years now, and it's, it's treated me really well. But there were some really distinct features that were missing on it uh, that really made me want to jump up to a, to a higher performance switch for Microtik. I was a little apprehensive about choosing the Microtik just because I haven't purchased anything from their brand previously. I don't, I don't have that familiarity with their product. Um, but they have a really good reputation and I decided, you know what, it was worth a shot to go in on something like this. The other reason I really wanted to, to check out Microtik was because I'm considering purchasing a new router at some point. Uh, and while I'm comfortable with going with something with PFSense, uh, I wanted to see what Microtik had to offer to kind of get an idea of, of how uh, the user interface would be to, to configure uh, a router configuration. Now this particular switch is in their 300 series and so it will run the full router OS uh, that comes with their uh, dedicated routers. And it, the performance of it is actually really good. It's, um, it can do inter VLAN routing at pretty much full wire speed. I did some tests and it was, was hitting over 800 megabits per second. And that was actually quite a bit faster than uh, my, my router, the, the Zywall 110 router that I had, which was only able to, to pull maybe 275 megabits between, uh, between LANs. So that was definitely a positive uh, aspect of this switch. The other thing I like about this switch is that it has four SFP plus 10 gigabit ports. And if you've watched my video on switching, uh, on migrating to 10 gigabit, uh, this gives me a nice connection between the VLANs that I have on this switch here and my 10 gigabit network. If you only have a couple of 10 gigabit devices, then you could just go and purchase this switch here because it has four 10 gigabit ports. And especially if you, you have just SFP plus devices, then you could just hook those up to the faster portion of the switch. Uh, and then you have full 24 ports of one gigabit. And so it actually, it was really nice to set up. I have a few different VLANs. I have an old VLAN here of, of uh, devices that I haven't migrated over to the new uh, address space that I'm using. And then I have the second eight ports going for uh, a new VLAN that I'm in the process of migrating over to for client devices. And then I have a third VLAN that is shared between uh, the 10 gigabit switch and the CRS328, and that's for servers and so forth that, that have the faster connection. There's also a fourth VLAN that I use as a DMZ, uh, and that is uh, just for, for devices that are accessible outside my network, and I wanna isolate those. So it works, it works really well. Uh, the one thing I'll say is that it has a little bit of a steep learning curve. Um, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, but it definitely took a while to learn because there's multiple ways you can set up VLANs depending on what system you have or what, what uh, model of Microtik that you have. There's the old style, the 1 and 200 series, that you set up differently from the 300 series. The 300 series, uh, you, you can set up a different way so you have uh, basically hardware acceleration on, on the routing aspect of it. So I did that, it's worked really well ever since getting it set up, and it's, it's a quick router. The other reason I chose this particular switch is because it offers power over ethernet. I have a couple of Ubiquiti wireless access points, and I previously used power over ethernet injectors to power them, and I was able to plug them in where they are were around the house. The problem was that I was wanting to move one to a location that didn't have a power outlet nearby. And so I was kind of torn between how to actually introduce power. I ended up having the injector here in the rack, but it was kind of a mess with cabling. And so I really wanted to switch with something that I could power directly from the switch. This works great, and, and I just all I had to do was plug them into the switch, no configuration, it auto-detected the access point, powered it properly, and it works great. So that I really uh, appreciate. 
Now you can see on the top here that there's two rows of lights. There's the uh, row lights on the top which are red and the ones on the green or on the bottom are green. It's kind of a Christmas theme. I'm not sure how they pick that. But anyway, uh, the red ones on top are if you're using power over ethernet, uh, then it will show you which ports have power. On the bottom, the green are just the standard activity lights. Now, the one thing I don't like in particular is that the lights are kind of hard to see, especially the bottom row when, when trying to see if you have like a link light. Um, the Netgear was real nice that it had the LEDs off the side so they were easier to read. Uh, and, this, and this particular switch doesn't have that. But that's a real minor issue. Overall, I highly recommend this switch. Not only does it give me P, uh, the PoE connections for the access points, but it also does everything I want to do for VLAN routing and uh, also setting up DHCP servers for each of the VLANs was no problem. It was really easy to do. Really nice management features on the DHCP server. It just has a boatload of features uh, in there that, and room to grow. The other thing that's great about it is, again, like I said, it's, it's really good for integrating 10 gigabit into your network because it has four 10 gigabit ports. And a lot of other switches in this price range only have two uh, 10 gigabit or, or none at all. Thanks for joining me on this video. If you liked it, click the like below. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll, I'll try to answer them best I can. Uh, and be sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos on, on tech equipment or photography gear. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.